We spent probably a couple of months actually talking through the kitchen design and what we wanted in the space. And um, we decided we really wanted an island bench. We really wanted a, um, a black sink in the middle. And we're hoping to have our windows on the side here so we had a lot of natural light coming through in the morning. And it seems bigger than it actually is. So like, it's amazing how just taking one wall out, what a difference it can make to a space. We tried to do as much pre-planning as we could so we weren't wasting your time. And also um, we wanted to have some really clear ideas on what we wanted and what we expected before we actually hired someone to, to do the important bit of actually designing things to a, a point where the builders can come in to do the job. So, <laughs> so I, I do like pops of colour and, um, and I think it helps lift, like, a, like if you have a white background or a white wall then you've got open slather to play with colour. So because we knew we had like a couple of years before everything was going to come to fruition we just started collecting bits and pieces gradually. Yeah. And I think financially it helped us um, to sort of like sort things out gradually as well rather than the big hit. I've really fallen in love with it and so they in the end they um, showed me the specs and so I had had a name to actually start yeah, following and Valare tiles um, here locally actually had had this product when I went in there and saw some of the other colors I just thought yep yeah, that's that's what I have to have so the thing I like about it is that there's shades of different colors in them mm. they're not all the same they're all like quite individual and you've got little um, faint um, like blues, greys, you know, pinky red sort of tones coming through. And that means when you have like some of these other appliance colours, it makes them pop as well. It and does. everything sort of blends in. And it works with the artwork too. It does. In the, in the space. Some of these pieces are from Rod's collection. And he's really into an artist by the name of Konstantin Popov. And there's a, like a pop of colour that also matches some of the artwork that we bought on the cruise. So we made sure that the roof line was straight all the way through to give us the line of sight from our front door to the amazing fountain that was also bought at auction. And we consider that to be an art piece too. We're trying to bring the outside in, and so we went for the, the windows, um, particularly the archway, I think is really effective. So as you come through the front door and walk through, the um, fountain becomes more and more centred as a visual, visual thing. One thing we noticed when we were going around display homes was that some of them would seem really cramped, or the design, there was something just not quite right about it. And I think going through and seeing, or sort of having an understanding about what you don't like then helps you with your design into creating something that, that it does work for you. Yeah. Fabulous, now show us the sanctuary. Let's start with the walk-in <laughs> robe. So it's every girl's dream to have a walk-in robe that actually fits all your stuff. <laughs> well, thanks to Nick <laughs> and her design, she has done the most amazing job. Oh, have <laughs> Um, yeah, look, I've um, been collecting for quite some time. So shoes, handbags, jackets in particular, and coats. And I think my walking robe does reflect that quite, <laughs> quite nicely. So um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. As, as you're going through. This is the most beautiful space. It makes me smile every day. Um, I really love, once again, the windows. And also behind the bed, we have windows where the morning light comes through. And it's a savannah glass. Um, it highlights that Aboriginal work. We highlight the little red tones. 
you're opening up into the space and then this bathroom is just is such a dream absolute dream we've got this huge um, shower recess it was a lot of fun picking out the pieces I had to have a red bath yep so um, so McCann's plum plumbing down in town was where we sourced that the tap where I'd fallen in love with years ago when I'd been travelling overseas in Italy and it's a Gessi brand, um, brand. I saved for quite a few years to be able to do this and ended up once again sourcing it. So the vanity, um, we saw a door something like this at um, KYO or KO, however you pronounce it, KYO. Um, down in um, the Ocean Grovey sort of area and I thought gee I really like that and I thought, the more I thought about what, what did I want in a vanity I just wanted some storage for starters but I really liked that that blend of the old and the modern sort of trying to mix it up and I think the house reflects that. So Taddy is a Welsh terrier um, that we have he's about 18 months old and I was trying to find something that was reasonably stylish for the bedroom area. And as we know, dogs are a little bit messy and all the rest of it, but he's actually a really good at being a clean boy. So I have this amazing, amazing bed. Yeah. 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 And then it was a matter of trying to get a colour scheme that works in this little zone here, which is actually different from the other spaces. Sort of picking up on that tone in the artwork and then going outside into the garden. So picking up some of the colours in the garden as well makes everything flow. Looks good. Yeah. yeah, as well. So wherever you look in this space, you can't help but smile. And, you know, looking out to the fountain outside, which was an auction piece from Charleston's Auction. <laughs> so I went to um, Charleston's Auctions down in Melbourne and I remember it was a June long weekend and that would have been two years ago now. It's before we actually started the renovation proper. And I actually went there to find a small piece of artwork and came home with this. <laughs> so um, I grew up in Ballarat and of course the Ballarat Botanic Gardens have the most amazing, you know, fountains and sculptures and all the rest of it. Um, and I couldn't believe that this was being sold at, at an auction I thought it must have been in this most amazing garden space it was missing the top part so the piece I bought was just from the, those fins going down with the cherubs and um, no one was bidding on it so I put my hand up and I won it <laughs> so I then had to on the long weekend try to find transport to get it back here so I'm driving home and I'm ringing up Rod saying, look, it'd be really great if you could get hold of, say, maybe six to ten blokes in about two hours' time because there's something heavy that I've bought that's, you know, coming off. And apparently when he rang around, there were all these people saying, yeah, we'll come around, but, you know, how heavy is it? And he said, oh, I don't know, it's probably not that heavy. Well, when this arrived on the back of a ute... <laughs> Um, it was heavy and it was a bit dangerous actually getting it off the back of the actual trailer itself. So it's actually sat in this yard and we had to then move it down the back um, while the reno was happening. So this is my bargain piece from an auction and then Rod had to then dig through clay <laughs> to make this pond after the reno. Um, yeah, so we had, um, I think it was Jim's Diggers came in and started it off and he finished it off. And then we got uh, Resi, um, Resi Plex Plastics down the road to actually do the liner for us. And um, yeah, we managed to put it all together. About six months later, Rod went to another Charleston's auction and bought the, the girl on top. And I couldn't believe it that the colour of the flower in her hair actually matches the colour on, on the other parts of the fountain as well. So even though it's two different styles, it still quite works. And then we've been having fun with plants and fish and sitting out here on the outdoor setting looking out at it. Makes me smile every day. <laughs>